Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. Today we'll talk about the static keyword. Knowing the mechanism behind it opens a new world of possibilities. It not only turns some pretty difficult stuff to easy, but also allows you to write much cleaner code. Let's dive straight into it. So here I have a simple setup created using those two tutorials. Then I added simple pickable coins. Each of them has a trigger collider and my coin script. The script is pretty simple. Over here I have three serialized variables. One single coin sprite, one multiple coin sprite, and then amount, which not only determines which sprite should be displayed, but also indicating how many coins the player should get when the item is picked up. I set the right sprite in the start method. Then I also have the on trigger enter to D method. Nothing magical there. I simply check if the object colliding with the coin is player, if so I increase the amount of gold she or he has, and then deactivate the coin. And of course there's also this add gold method in the player script. As expected it only increases the gold amount and then locks it. So you may not be aware of it, but generally when you work with variables you work with instance variables. Let's for example look at the amount variable in the coin script. It is quite obvious that each coin object may have their completely different value. We don't even realize but most variables work this way. For example, objects transform. Each object has its own position, its own rotation, its own scale. However, there are use cases where we would like to have a variable that is shared among all objects of the same type. For example, our sprites in the coin script. Even though they are always the same, each coin object stores them separately. And even though this doesn't sound like a big issue, sometimes it can be. Imagine that the variable doesn't store a reference to a sprite, but rather a list with 10 millions of values. Now each object has a separate list with exactly the same data. I think you know what I'm trying to say. Would be great if there was a way to share a variable among all objects of the same type. It turns out it's one of the use cases for the static keyword. So let's have a look at the example. Oh, and before we do that, just one small side note. The static variables, even if they have the serialized field attribute, do not show up in the inspector. Okay, so let's get to the example. In my coin script, I create two integer variables. One of them is static and the one is not. Then, when the coin is picked up, I increase both values and lock them in the console. Let's see what will happen. You see the value in the non-static variable is always changing to one. That's because it is a instance variable local to the particular object. The other one, however, the static one, is increasing every single time we are picking up the coin. That's because the static variables are shared among all the instances of a class. Let's try a little bit more powerful example. Let's create two lists, one non-static and one static. Then in the start method let's add this particular coin to the list. Then let's create an update method in which we lock the number of items in each list whenever we press the left mouse button. What is your guess? What did we create? Every single time we click the button, we lock the number of coins in the level. That means reference to each of them is stored in our static list. This gives us so many possibilities. For example, let's remove the coin from the list every single time it is collected. This allows us to count how many coins are still to be picked up. Let's have a look at something even more awesome. So it turns out not only variables can be static. Let's create our first static method. Inside of it we'll iterate through all of the coins and reactivate them. There's something very special about the static methods. To understand that fully, let's first have a look at the onTriggerEnter to D method in the coin script. As you remember, our player script has the addGold method. In order to call it, we first had to grab the player script, the one that was attached to the object that collided with a coin. If we had several objects with the player script on them, the method would be called only on the one that collided with the coin. That means every single time we want to call the instance method, we have to do it on a specific instance of a script. But when a method is static, 
we can do something crazy. We can call it using the name of the class. A small side note over here. Because the method is shared among all the instances, it cannot have access to any instance variables. Of course, as expected, you can use inside of it any static ones. There is one more very common use case for the static keyword. Sometimes you may want to process some data or perform some calculations. And you know that you will do it in many different contexts. And the algorithm relies only on the parameters. You don't see any sense in introducing any local variables. That is perfect use case for a static method or even service class, which will contain various static methods. You may not realize it, but you sometimes work with classes like that. For example, the random class or the class containing all the mathematical functions, mathf. So here I have a simple script. In the fifth line, I have a variable to store my camera. Then between line 6 and 18, I have something very special. It's pattern called lazy initialization. So when somebody tries to access the camera variable, I'm checking if it has a reference to anything. If not, I grab the main camera and store inside of it. Then I return the value stored in the variable. This pattern is quite useful when you have some complex data, but you are not sure if it will be used or not. It makes sure it will be initialized only if it's needed. In this example, it is a little bit overkill, but I thought it might be interesting for you. Then on line 19, we have a simple method, which converts the screen position of mouse to word position. So this is a perfect example of a static method. It relies only on static variables. In fact, we could even grab the main camera inside of it. That would make the class even simpler. If the static variable was public, it could be also accessed by all other scripts without creating instance of this class. So I hope you got it already. The static variables and static methods can be accessed within any context without creating instance of a class. If you have a class that contains only static variables and static methods, you can mark it as a static too. This will ensure that nothing non-static can be created there. And that's really it. If you found this tutorial useful, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. And in the meanwhile, have a fantastic day. Love you and bye bye.